Hi, this is Adrian Berg, and this is the Ageless Traveler video uh, podcast. Is there such a thing as a video podcast? I don't know. Well, we've got one anyway. And we're going to be speaking with a guest that we just had on our regular podcast, which you will find disseminated everywhere on iTunes and Spotify and any place that you listen to podcasts, as well as AgelessTraveler.com. And his name is Ronan McMahon. He's talking to us, I think, from the beautiful country of Ireland. We'll find out exactly where in a moment, but you'll hear it from his voice. And I want you to know that one of my great loves is real estate. If you did listen to our show, you'll see why people who are both retired and younger are going abroad. And I just came back from a beautiful look at Portugal, where uh, Ronan also has a home. And we'll be visiting there there as tourists. We're going to have an ageless traveler trip in May of 2024 to Portugal. But I made sure that we put in a little time for those people who want to look at real estate abroad. But one way to do that in a powerful way is to do it with groups. And that's what Ronan brings to the table. And I wanted him to explain it to you. And uh, then I'm going to tell you about, about my shirt. Yeah, we're going to have a little discussion about this shirt. So Ronan, thanks for being with us again. And yes, you, you mentioned that, uh, of course, you go out in the world, you have real estate trend alert, you give a lot of information and seminars, webinars on how to buy abroad. But what you've also put together is something else, which is almost like a buying consortium, right? So that you can negotiate. I, I agree. You do it. Yeah, absolutely, Adrian. So what, what, what I do along with my team and Real Estate Trend Alert is we pan out across the globe to find the best places internationally to, to buy real estate. Once we found those places, then we drill and say, you know, from an investment perspective, what's the best way to play this market? You know, if I want to generate rental, should I be buying two bed, two bath condos or should I be buying bigger, bigger villas? And then, and this is where the the kind of the real deep, deep value in terms of what we do lies. Um, I sit down with developers and instead of negotiating a price for a single home or condo, like you or I would if we were just on our own on, on this journey, I negotiate a price for, say, 100 condos. And then each member of, of my group, we all buy our condos, our homes, we all buy them individually, but effectively we're benefiting of the group buying power that as a group we're coming together and, you know, taking that much of the developer's inventory and we get to buy before the developer launches on the local market so we get to cherry pick the best units and um, we get members only pricing that's at a deep discount to what the developer goes on and then launches the rest of the the inventory too so you know not only do we get better pricing in terms but it also significantly de-risks the project when when we come together and when we collectively albeit again everyone's buying their condo individually but collectively we we're in early and you know we we just get the best of all right. worlds and of course there's less vacancy so it becomes more valuable almost immediately but let me ask you uh, two really hardcore investor questions one when i look at the price of anything u.s domestic or, or uh, abroad I don't only look at the cost to buy it because that almost is irrelevant. What's really important is how much money am I going to make my net from this? And that often has a lot to do with the financing and how much it's costing me to finance it and the monthly charges, whether it's HOA fees or, you know, I even have mobile homes. So some of this is the land lease. I mean, in Palm Springs, your condos may have a land lease. So it's the carrying costs, right? Most of which is either mortgage if you financed it and you always have some kind of a monthly. How do you make that analysis? Uh, do you have help in financing? Question number one. And do you look at properties that do have homeowners fees or lease fees in addition to the fact that you're buying the property? Yeah, absolutely. So for, first of all, finance, um, if you're looking 
to, to Europe, if you're looking to Portugal and Spain, for example, um, mortgage finance is available from the country's major banks. You can finance up to either 70 or 80 percent at you know, rates that are currently in the region of maybe about four, 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 four and a half percent. Of course, roll back just, I would say, nine months ago, and you could fix for 20 years in Portugal at rates as low as 1.2 or 1.3 percent. So um, in Europe, you know, big established banks like back home, um, rates have been lower than they have been in the U.S. for the duration of the cycle. You know, when rates in the U.S. went to zero, they were 0.5% negative in, in Europe. Looking outside of, of Europe, the situation gets, a, gets quite a bit more complex. Um, bank, it's generally very cumbersome and expensive to get a mortgage from a local bank in, say, Mexico or Costa Rica. It's generally a very, very massive bureaucratic hurdle and really expensive. So what we do with our RITA member-only deals is we get the developer to offer developer finance, which means that on delivery, you'll have a five-year payment plan. So how these deals typically work is you pay where they're pre-construction, you pay 50% during a three-year construction period, and then the remaining 50% finance is available direct from, from the developer. So that eases the, the the blow of that you know for for a lot of people they look to their self-directed ira to, to to finance a purchase or maybe it's you know releasing a line of, of credit back home so and then me, I, I'm, I'm going to look at the audience right now and i'm going to say don't hold this against me but my tv work which got an emmy by the way was a long time ago 2004 was for the irs so I say, don't hold it against you. It's called the IRS Tax Beat, and it was sponsored by the Internal Revenue Service that I actually hold dear to my heart. I know you're saying, boo, boo, but okay. So I do own real estate in my IRA, and you can own real estate in your IRA, but not abroad. However, there are ways to use IRA distributions to finance anything in the world. That's not a problem. You have to know the difference. And in my book, The Retirement Income Explosion, which you get free if you join our Facebook salon, it tells you all about this. Because I told you owning real estate in an IRA is, again, something I've done. It's worked very well for me with domestic real estate. But there are ways for to boost your ability to also buy real estate outside of the U.S. there, although not directly. Now, so let's go back. Let's go back to... Uh, the issue of the monthly. Now, when we have this monthly, this uh, is something that wears on me. I, I live in a condo. Yeah. So it's getting expensive and our HOA got together to see what we can do. What What is that like? So um, typically you are like a typical condo fee in a Mexico resort destination for a comfortable two bed, two bath condo might be in the region of 250 to $300 per month. Your annual property taxes are probably going to be in the region of about $500 that, that that's annual. Um, so th 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 those are the, the, the big ones. So significantly lower than, than the U S now, Adrian, if you go to other places, you can take those, you know, you can take the, the HOA fees off the table if you go to, you know, a French village or if you go to a medieval town in Spain because there your HOA amenities or the square and the plaza right in front of your house. You know, these 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 things are are you know are are for, for the broader community. So I'm told, you know, holding costs are a fraction of of what you'd you'd expect to pay in the states. You know, you go to parts of Europe and to maybe less 
less high amenity communities can come with you know monthly HOA fees as as low as seventy or eighty dollars. Well, of course, you go. To, sometimes you cover Cyprus or Greece or Turkey, and that's where you'll see some of the the, the low ones. Yeah, but you mentioned yeah, I, that I I don't want to go away from. We talked about bolt holes, and you said, well, if you buy something in a medieval village or in France, your amenities are right there, and they are. So can you tell us a little bit about buying inexpensive property just to have it there and go there every once in a while? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I did this in 2008. You know, you, you might remember the world was the world was on the brink. You know, people were afraid the money it. would. You yeah, had the money would stop coming out of, out of the ATM machines. And what I did then is I went to a village called Cotacachi in Ecuador. It's a place I loved, was very, very familiar with it. I spent $39,500, under $40,000. I bought a beautiful penthouse condo that had, you know, 900 square feet inside, but this huge outside terrace you know this is a place where just fruit grows everywhere food amazing food is so cheap it's almost free you know five dollars and you go to the market and you feel like you've an, enough food for the week you could just live there on almost nothing you know adrian i don't remember what what the the hoa fees were i believe at the time they were somewhere in the region of Forty-five dollars per month, that's right, that's right. almost, almost, almost nothing. You know, cost of living, almost nothing. And this was my insurance policy because, you know, professionally, I was all in on real estate. Investment-wise, I was all in on real estate, and the world just felt it was was at this brink. So I did two things. I got my bolt hole in place. That was my plan B. And then physically, I took myself to the beaches of Northeast Brazil in search of opportunity. And it was just amazing how these things coalesced. Immediately, I felt more optimistic because my I had my plan B and it was a really, really good plan. You know, I would have been very happy to, to, to be up there. Um, but what I found was that was a moment where there was still opportunity in the world. And that was, you know, a moment where the economy in Northeast Brazil was on a tear, you know, beachfront properties were doubling in value every, every two, two to three years. And, you know, on top of bold holds, that also ta taught me the big lesson that if you're willing to look everywhere, there's, there's always, always opportunity, opportunity somewhere. Yeah. But back to back to bolt holes. I mean, you look to places like Umbria in Italy. Again, you spend you spend fifty to a hundred thousand dollars and you could just find a wonderful property in a beautiful village or outside a town on land with with a well, a garden that can provide you with your with your veg, you, know, you buy your wine. Uh, character you buy your wine from your neighbor um this you know these things we worry about there there is a solution and you know it it does not it comes with mostly upside so you can hear the passion i'll give you a couple of little things i'll incentivize you to think about this even if you never thought that you could be one of those people who says at the cocktail party, oh, yes, I'm going to my house in, in Bordeaux. You know, and I'm like, oh, my God, I got a house in Bordeaux. Well, it could cost you $60,000. I found several in France for about that price. Uh, and as Ronan says, in December that just passed, I was over at Buzos, which is beautiful beachfront in, uh, in um, Rio, near Rio, not too far from Rio de Janeiro. And you'd be surprised. The world really is your oyster. And that's what I want to help you open up. So all you need to do is go to our uh, atheisttraveler.com. You can travel with us. You can get all the freebies if you join our Facebook salon. And best of all, you get people like our advisory board, like our wonderful expert guests like Ronan. You can see the passion, but you can also see the know-how that helps you. 
Uh, and this is not just about real estate. It's about every kind of lifestyle travel you could think about, including not having the companions you used to have. Or like my husband is diabetic now and I have blood pressure issues, we tell you the truth. So I have to have low sodium. So how do I go to great restaurants? Well, we have our culinary experts that will help you do that. Uh, and before we leave, I promise I was going to say something about my shirt. I'm not a shop. We're already at a point in life where we have too much, right? We're all reading Maria Kondo, how to get rid of the stuff you don't love. But if you travel enough, you're going to see things in this world. So where is the latest fashion? Korea. Yes, Seoul, Korea. When I was there in August, I have a lot of these. They're like $8. So we were talking about lifestyle costs. Uh, and I bought for my kids, my grandkids, and myself. Beautiful stuff. It reminds me of my mother used to knit. But it turned out to be the cutting edge of fashion. And the other thing I want to show you is my ring. My ring is called Blue John. This is Blue John, which you can only get in Castleton in Derbyshire, England. It's the only place that you can get it in the whole world. So isn't that great? It's very expensive, uh, under $100 with all kinds of silver and the stone and everything. I like that too. All my pillows in the back. One is from Panama, the little one. The other one is from uh, Amsterdam. A lifestyle of travel, whether you live there or you travel there, is enriching in so many beautiful ways. So that's a collection of stuff, but better is the collection of people. So I'm collecting you, Ronan. You are now part of the Ageless Traveler Salon. I consider myself proud to be part of your collection, Adrian. Thank you. And everybody <laughs> else, you know what I'm going to say? Never stop traveling. Ageless Traveler, lifelong travel made easy.